Hi, I am the Total Joint Nurse Navigator here at Reston Hospital Center. We've set aside a little bit of time just to go over what is required and give you a little bit of information so that you feel prepared for your total joint replacement. Some objectives for class. So we want to establish some realistic expectations of what to expect during your hospital stay here at Reston Hospital Center. Want to also understand some important concepts regarding pain management, blood clot prevention, and fall prevention. Want to comprehend the discharge planning process, including medications and average times for discharge. Want to gain a clear picture of the different functions and expectations for occupational and physical therapy. We want to learn a couple tools to optimize your recovery after surgery. Before surgery, we need you to attend a preoperative appointment here at Reston Hospital Center. This needs to be within 30 days of your joint replacement. Now, if you would like to come to Reston Hospital to see the nurse practitioner, her name is Paloma, she is able to give you your medical clearance. That way, you do not have to go to your own primary care provider as well. If you would only like to see the nurse, then you can call that first number next to the nurse, and they are able to do your lab work, your EKG, which is your heart screening, and also the MRSA screening that is in your NARES. We will also give you your pre-op carb drinks, and we want you to drink those. They will tell you the certain times to drink them. We'll also give you that special wash that you need to use the night before and the morning of surgery. We want you to bring the following with you. Any orders from your surgeon, lists of medications, name of preferred pharmacy, lists of past surgeries, medical conditions, and major hospitalizations. The way that I like to tell my patients to do this is just bring your entire pre-op packet with you from the surgeon's office. That way, they are able to pull out any important information that they may need. Now, for outpatient physical therapy, this is very important for all of my knee patients and some of my hip patients. If your surgeon has told you that you will require outpatient physical therapy to start after surgery, this needs to start two to three days after discharge. So please make that appointment now because facilities often do fill up pretty quickly. Important information. This is just a little cheat sheet for you. You can use it if you'd like or you don't have to, but this way while you have a clear mind prior to surgery, you can jot down the important things that we may ask you, such as allergies, Pharmacy, we do need the name and the address of your pharmacy. Contact person, we need somebody that we are able to contact via phone. The surgeons are very good about coming out and letting your support person know how you did during the surgery. However, if there is something in the operating room that they are not able to you know, come out and check on you, then they will at least give you a phone call. CPAP, sleep apnea machine. So if you, if you require a CPAP machine for sleep apnea, we need you to bring your mask your attachment and to know your settings. Medications. This includes prescription, over-the-counter, and herbal supplements. We want to know the name, the dosage, and how many times a day you take those medications. Our nurses here at Reston Hospital Center during your pre-op appointment will tell you when to stop certain medications. Before surgery, what to pack? Loose-fitting clothes. Please pack something that is comfortable, such as a larger size of sweatpants or shorts and a nice t-shirt, maybe a zip-up sweatshirt if you get cold very easily. We just want something that is good for your recovery and is easy to get on and off. Non-skid shoes preferably tie with a full enclosed back. We do recommend that you purchase a new pair of shoes because when you're walking with bone-on-bone -bone pain, which most of you have been for a year or longer, it causes you to walk with an antalgic gait or a limp whether that limp is subtle or severe. So by purchasing a new pair of shoes, it gives you a new shot at alignment. We do like uh, tie shoes, and the reason is is because slip-on shoes are not safe for you. Most patients do wear slip-on shoes prior to surgery, and that's due to the easiness of getting in and out of the shoe. If you are having trouble with tying your shoes now, there are a couple options for you. Number one, which my patients don't always like, but your support person should be able to help you at least for the first week or two while you're starting to you know, get used to getting up and getting around the house and tying your shoes. Now the second option is Amazon sells lock laces. They are about $8. And what the lock laces do is they tighten and it's a pull string tighten. So not only do they tighten around the tongue of your shoe, they tighten around your entire shoe, which makes it safer for you. The reason why we're telling you tennis shoes is because they give you better stability and better support. Your regular toiletries. Now, if you would like to bring something from home, you're more than welcome. 
Although I will tell you that Reston Hospital has almost everything that you need. We have toothbrush, toothpaste, comb, music books, and tablets. If you have a work laptop or have a laptop at home, please make sure you just leave that at home. We have had patients make bad decisions on pain medication and under anesthesia, and so we would prefer you just to focus on that when you get back home. CPAP. We've already gone over that. We need you to please bring your mask, attachment, and know the settings for your machine. Soft earplugs and a sound machine. I will tell you that I've never seen anybody bring a sound machine, but if you would like to, again, more than welcome. Soft earplugs. If you're somebody that is a very light sleeper, we do recommend that you purchase and, and bring the pair in. The reason is, is because this is the Rustin, not the Weston. So unfortunately, we do have to bug you during the night, and that's just for your safety to make sure that we're checking your vital signs, and most of you are going to ask to get up to use the restroom at least once or twice, and even may take a walk in the middle of the night. Chapstick and hard candy. This is very helpful because your mouths are going to be very dry after surgery. You will be on mostly a regular diet, but we don't want you to guzzle the entire pitcher of water down. So please make sure you bring something with you. You can even bring cough drops if you would like. Long charging cable. I will tell you that where the outlets are placed in the room, sometimes it will not allow your phone to be in the bed or in the chair charging at all times. So if you would like to purchase a long charging cable, a 10-foot charging cable from Amazon works perfectly. Before surgery, set up your home. We don't want you to avoid the stairs. Stairs are great therapy for your joint. We do, however, need to have at least one railing installed. The other little helpful hint that we give you is just make sure that if you do have railings and you live in an older home, just take a Phillips head screwdriver and just make sure that those are tight and safe for you. Remove bath mats, rugs, and obstacles. We want you to have a clear path between the kitchen, dining room, living room, and anywhere that you're going to be spending the majority of your time. Night lights, most important in bedrooms and bathrooms. Most of my patients that fall, they fall at night when they're trying to rush to the restroom or they're trying to go and get a drink of water. So please make sure that you have illumination anywhere that you may be going in the middle of the night. Ice packs and ice machines. Ice machines are a wonderful investment, but they are usually an out-of-pocket cost. So if you are able to afford them, absolutely, we love them, they're great. However, if you are a patient that is unable to afford that, then we have some helpful hints for you. So a homemade ice pack involving caro syrup. Most of you have heard caro syrup from uh, the use of pecan pie from the bakery aisle. If you buy a couple of bottles of caro syrup, whether it's light or dark, they both work, and buy some heavy duty freezer Ziploc bags, pour the caro syrup into the bag, double bag it and pop it into your freezer. Because of the sugar content, it does not freeze all the way through, so it makes for a great moldable ice pack for both hips and knee replacement patients. Before surgery, equipment needs. Before surgery, everybody needs to obtain a front-wheeled rolling walker. So that is not a rollator. A lot of patients have heard of rollators that have the four wheels. They're great. They swivel all around. But they are not safe for joint replacement patients. So we need you to have a walker with two wheels on the front, no wheels on the back. I will tell you that I've done a lot of research for you guys, and Amazon seems to be the cheapest. They run about $29, $30 on Amazon. And if you are a tall patient, such as over the height of 6'2", you may need a tall walker. You can also purchase those on Amazon as well, and uh, they run a little bit more expensive. The other option for you is you can go to CVS, Walgreens. They have the walkers there. However, I've noticed they are about $50 to $60, and so Amazon is much cheaper for you. Reston Hospital does not have walkers to give to you the day of discharge, so please make sure that you do obtain one prior to coming in. Now, a cane. A cane can be used on stairs, which almost all of you are going to use a cane on stairs, unless you have two railings. Now you will eventually transition from the walker to the cane, but that is not until you're either cleared by your outpatient therapist or until your follow-up appointment with your surgeon. Potentially needed, bathroom equipment. You may need something for toilet seat elevation. If you are a patient that is struggling by getting off the toilet now, then yes, after joint replacement, it's probably a good idea for you to have something to help you get off afterwards. Now, this is decided by, the, uh, by your occupational therapist here at Reston, and we will be able to tell you if we recommend one for you. Day of surgery timeline. Please follow instructions from pre-op for arrival times. 
This includes when to stop eating and drinking, when to take the carb drinks that I discussed earlier in the presentation, and when to use that special wash. So the operating room, you'll approximately be in the operating room for two hours, and then the recovery room is approximately three hours. So for family and friends, if you'd like to go out and grab a bite to eat, you are more than welcome to do so. Family contact for surgeon, we've already gone over. There's free Wi-Fi, but I think there's free Wi-Fi everywhere in America now. And we do have a coffee shop if you would like to purchase something from them. They are right near that waiting area of Pavilion 1 slash 2. You'll be transferred to the total joint floor after your spinal resolves or you are awake enough after general anesthesia. Day of surgery. So right when you get up to the floor from surgery, you will actually walk and it's part of your physical therapy evaluation. You will walk right from the stretcher to the bed and that's approximately 20 feet. You're going to be weight bearing as tolerated, which means you'll be able to put as much weight down that operative leg as you feel comfortable. Your goal is to take two or three more walks depending on your arrival time to the floor. Now, if you arrive at 10 p.m., we are not expecting you to walk two or three more times, but we do want you to be up and moving just so that your joint does not get stiff. Please call nursing staff for assistance. You may not get out of bed by yourself or even with a family member. You need to have somebody from the hospital help you up out of bed. You'll be resting in a recliner chair or in bed. Typical schedule post-op day number one. The vampires generally come out between four and five o'clock in the morning. Then you will be up in your recliner chair at 6 a.m. I know that's early, but it is a requirement of our total joint program, and the surgeons are actually looking for you to be sitting up by the time they come to see you. You'll have your physician and or PA rounds around 7, and then breakfast is generally served between 7.30 and 8 a.m. They're very good about delivering on time because they understand your jam-packed schedule. You will have individual physical therapy and occupational therapy sessions between 8 and 10. You will also have a group physical therapy class. This varies. Generally, it's at 11 a.m. or maybe 1.30, but you will see a green sheet in your room the day of surgery. So for family and friends, you will know the day of surgery when to attend the group class. We do recommend that a family member or support person does come to the group class because I give a lot of discharge instructions. Now, lunch will be delivered about 12.30, right when you're walking back from the joint class, and discharge generally starts between 1 and 3 in the afternoon. Now, if you're somebody that has a far commute, please just let us know so that we can try and get you out as soon as possible. Physical therapy and occupational therapy, post-op day number one. Occupational therapy, they will come in, they'll do their individual session with you, which includes your activities of daily living, such as dressing, the toilet and shower transfers, and any adaptive equipment training if needed. This will be decided by the occupational therapist, so please do not purchase any adaptive equipment, such as a shoehorn or a sock grabber prior to surgery. Individual PT session. So this is when they'll come in, the physical therapist will rev review and advance any exercises. They will practice navigating the stairs and car transfers. So we will not send you home unless you are cleared on the stairs and you feel safe. We want you to remain out of bed. You'll walk to your group class. We'll advance exercises also in the group class. And the last thing is we want you to work with nursing on pain control. We cannot read your mind as a nurse, so please just make sure you communicate with us if you are in pain, and we will give you the appropriate pain medication. Patient rooms, surgical main, fourth floor. They are all private rooms, so yay, no roommates like college. There's whiteboards in each room, and the whiteboards is our main line of communication between the nurse and the patient, and also the nurse tech and the patient. There will be their phone numbers up on the board that you can call directly from, from your room phone, or from your personal cell phone. We do not keep your numbers, so it's cleared once the staff member signs out after their shift. There's a recliner chair for each patient because we make you sit up in that recliner chair. Pain management. This is the slide that everybody loves to talk about. You will either have spinal or general anesthesia. You also may be offered a nerve block, and sometimes the surgeons will do what's called an interarticular injection in the actual surgery. And this is just an injection of extra pain and numbing medication during the operation. Now you will have some scheduled oral medications. This is our multimodal regimen or what we call our cocktail. This includes an anti-inflammatory called Celebrex, nerve, uh, a nerve pain medication called Neurotinin or Gabapentin. This is surgeon specific. 
Incisional pain, extra strength Tylenol. Now I know a lot of patients say that extra strength Tylenol does not work for them, but when you take it in conjunction with other medications, it hits off of different receptors in your body. So it does help lower your pain level. Then you will also have Tramadol or Altram, and that is for joint pain. That is a scheduled narcotic, and all of these medications will automatically be given to you uh, during certain times of the day. You may have something called oxycodone or roxycodone or something called hydrocodone or norco. That is for breakthrough pain and it is only as needed. You must request it from your nurse and it usually is available every four to six hours depending on the surgeon for severe pain. What this means is after you take those scheduled oral medications, if your pain's not getting any better an hour or two later, then please just let your nurse know and we can give you that oxycodone or the Norco. There are multiple side effects. Most side effects that are included with oxycodone or hydrocodone are drowsiness, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, constipation, and just most patients feel a little off when they take that medication. It is pretty potent, so if you need it, yes, we will give it to you. If you don't need it, then no, it's not going to be given. Thigh pain or soreness, you may have some thigh pain or soreness. It's, it's a normal part of the healing process and from the surgery itself, that'll go away. It just may take some time. Keeping you safe, fall precautions. Call, don't fall. I know that sounds silly, but it is very important. You may have an altered balance and level of alertness. You may have some side effects of the pain medication, including that constipation, nausea, dizziness, and drowsiness. You may have some connections, as such as foot pumps, the polar ice machine, and the IV hydration. So we always want you to call for assistance when you get up. We even have safety sensors, so if you're sneaky and you try to get up, we'll know about it. What to expect post-op? Everybody in the hospital for a knee replacement will have a polar ice machine while you're here for your stay. For hip replacements, you will have an ice pack given to you. And you'll also have foot pumps and SCD machines. So on the slide behind me, you will see the foot pump is the one on the foot and the one on the calf is an SCD. What they do is they automatically pump up and so they circulate your blood up and down your leg for you. You will also have a waterproof dressing it may be tan in color or silver, depending on your surgeon. What these dressings are made to do is absorb any drainage that is sitting on your incision site. They will be waterproof, which means yes, you can go ahead and take a shower. However, no, no submerging, so no tubs, baths, or hot tubs. For my knee patients, please do not place anything under your knee. We want you resting straight or bent. We don't want you resting in between. Nutrition, expressly for you. We do have patient ambassadors that come around and take your order. Please notify your nurse of any special dietary needs. The timing of meals does vary the day of surgery. So once you're in your room, we will deliver a tray to you. If you are a patient who is having a later surgery and you arrive to the floor after 6.30 p.m., we do have box lunches that are available for you. Comes with a turkey sandwich, a fruit box, and some juice. Tip. See that tip down there? That's just from patients that have told me, don't order the pancakes or the grilled chicken. Typical schedule post-op day number two. If for some reason you have to stay, such as you're not cleared by physical therapy on the first day, or you have some medical issues going on, then we will keep you overnight again. You'll have the physician and or PA rounds around seven. You'll have breakfast at the same time. Most, most patients will have an individual physical therapy session again. Although most of you will not require occupational therapy because you've been cleared the day before. You will have lunch at 1230 if desired and discharge is a little earlier that day between 11 and 1 because you don't have to listen to me yap. Discharge process. A discharge order may be entered the morning of post-op day number one. Home with outpatient physical therapy. Greater than 95% of our patients go directly home. The next three bullets, home with home therapy, skilled nursing facility, or acute rehab facility, this is very rare for our patients. Now, however, if you have a concern about going somewhere other than home, then please make sure you have a discussion with your surgeon prior to surgery. It is a collaborative decision based on multiple factors, including current living arrangement, caregiver and support, and mobility prior to surgery. Prescriptions at discharge. Your prescriptions may be electronically sent, and that means you will need to go to the pharmacy on the way home to get them filled. We will give you opioid education prior to going home. 
Please do not worry about addiction. You are having an acute surgery, and when, you're, when you no longer have pain, stop taking the pain medication. Anticoagulation or a blood thinner. Everybody is going to go home on a blood thinner, and this is patient-specific and surgeon-specific. We do like to use aspirin, either 81 milligrams, which is a baby aspirin, or 325, which is an adult aspirin, and this will all be written down for you prior to discharge. Now, if you are a patient that needs something a little stronger, our other options are Coumadin, Eliquis, Lovenox, or Xarelto. Post-surgery. Please sleep in whatever position is comfortable. Back is best, just like it is with a baby, but a lot of patients prefer to sleep on their side. We do recommend that you put a pillow in between your legs just because if you are sleeping on your side, then most patients sleep in a fetal position with their knees towards their chest, which means that when you go to stand up in the morning, your knee is going to be pretty stiff from just being in one position. So if you have that pillow there, it can remind you to stretch it out in the middle of the night. Please no belly sleeping. Belly sleeping is bad for your spine and for your joint because it puts a lot of pressure on your body. Rest ice elevation. We want you to ice as much as you can tolerate. The old school way used to be 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. That is no longer best practice. As long as you have a barrier, such as a pair of pants, or if you're wearing shorts, a pillowcase works great, in between your ice and your incision site, then we want you to ice as much as you can tolerate, even at nighttime. No pillow under the knee like we've already gone over for the knee replacement patients. For my hip replacement patients, you are able to place a pillow under your knee if you would like. Steps to prevent complication. Wash your hands. I know that sounds like second nature, but we want you to be hypervigilant on hand washing directly after surgery. Due to your risk of infection, we want to prevent infection as much as possible. So just any time that you're dealing with food, animals, or going to the bathroom, wash your hands with soap and water. Keep pets away from incision. So if you would like to snuggle with your pet, that's okay, but please make sure you have a long pair of pants on so that you are covered. We want to minimize exposure to assisted living facilities. This is why we don't like sending our patients to facilities unless needed, because you are at a higher risk of infection, and when you go to a facility, it also increases your risk. Avoid risky situations, standing on step stools, ladders, or I don't know who is cleaning their gutter after joint replacement, but that is why it is on here for at least four weeks after surgery. Now, that is the end of the presentation, but if you do have any questions or concern, please feel free to reach out to me either by phone or email. Email is the best way to get a hold of me just because I do respond to you guys in the evening and also on the weekends. I am your primary contact person, so please, any question is not a silly question. Thank you.